All right, Shalom. And first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the Akim and to the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, pushing this truth out in faith and sincerity. I am Shema Allah, all right, from the Great Millstone Houston camp. All right, this is going to be a lesson. On the uh, title, not the appearance, all right, but the message. Because you got our people, all right, we try to Israelites, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right, the true Israelites of the Bible. You know they they like to see carnal things. They're they're carnal, all right. They 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 focus on you know clothing, all right, you know uh, shoes, you know. All of this other bullshit, right? Because you got you got a lot of camps that that actually you know wears matching garments, right? They gotta have the top notch garments. They got you got a a, a Passover garment, a garment for for each high holy day, right? Selling them, you know. You got camps that having. Cookouts, you know, broadcasting it, you know, for the uh, for the world to see, right? When, when that's not what this truth is about, right? The truth is not about how good you can dress, how how good of an Israelite, all right, that you can um. Basically, you know, how good your Israelite clothing is, all right? How good your fringes look. You know, it's not it's not about that. The message, all right, and what is the word being preached, all right, is more than all of that, all right, it's more important than all of that, right? Because food, all right, and how good you look, that's not going to bring someone to repentance, you know? But this is John seven twenty four. This is judged not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment, right? So you don't judge off of what you see, you know? You don't judge off what you see, all right? Because it's way more than that, you know? It's because uh, you got particular guys that, you know, all their garments match each other, right? This, this not, that does not mean that, that's, that they have the truth. That does not mean that those guys are sincere, right? And it don't take away from them being sincere, but I'm just saying that that's not like, like folks, just, just because the outside looks beautiful, you know, don't mean that the inside is beautiful, you know, you can understand, all right? Because if a good example is John the Baptist, right, because... It tells you what he wore. This is Matthew 3 and 4. It says, And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Right? So if the, if the, if the average Israelite today seen John the Baptist, right, they would call him a bum. Right? They wouldn't, they wouldn't like the way he looked. They probably wouldn't even listen they wouldn't listen to what he, like the message that he has, that that he would have spoken. All right, they would have been too caught up of on how he looked, how he dressed. All right, but what what did Yahweh Shai say about John? It's Matthew eleven. And seven. And as they departed, the house shall begin to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. I right, mean some some weak, feeble dude. Alright. It says, But but what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Raiment, behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Soft clothing as in, you know, the 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 good ass material, you know, clothing, right? Nice clothing. All right. He said soft clothing are 
He said, but behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. Right, because you got you got uh, a lot of people today, they in the Gucci, Louis Vuitton, you know, and all of that, wearing all that expensive clothing, right? When Israel's on the curses, so they they really can't even afford to be fucking, you know, buying all of that shit, but they just want to keep their appearance up. They care more about the appearance than anything, right? We broke in the motherfucker, but they dress nice as hell, Right? But it says, but what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet. Yea, I say unto you, a more than a prophet. Right? So John the Baptist was a prophet. Right? Yeah, I was shot basically was saying, it, it ain't, bro, it's not about the, the appearance, the clothes. Right? Because he's a prophet. What does a prophet do? A prophet uh, prophesies. All right, speaks, which means to speak before, right? Tell you something before it happens, right? And that is a, uh, the prophet is really the top man of the most high, you know? All right? And the prophets are the servants of the heavenly father, right? They are set up to warn Israel, all right, from destruction, all right, to warn Israel from the Most High. All right, that's an important job. All right, when the Most High sent out Ezekiel in Ezekiel, the third chapter, when he said, eat this road, go speak unto the house of Israel. All right, let me get that to real quick. Ezekiel 3. And once said, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this road, and go speak unto the house of Israel. All right, so he told him that, to get this truth and go speak to the Israelites, right? He didn't say, you know, eat this roll, then, you know, go get you a nice garment. Make sure, make, make sure you're coordinating, right? <laughs> make sure you match it. Make sure you got the matching sandals on, whatever, you know. Make sure, make sure, make sure that motherfucker look nice. That No, that, wouldn't, that wasn't a part of the, of, of the plan. Learn and go teach. That's it. Simple. The word is going to do everything for you, right? The word is going to do everything, right? Because you don't need any gimmicks or any tricks or, or to be having cookouts or none of that, all right? I mean, you can you can, you can can have your, your, your little cookout, but you, do, you shouldn't, you know, just put that all over the internet. It's like, this is what we are about because, you know, our people... We're under the curses, you know, and Jacob's trouble is approaching. You know, you don't want to be putting that message of party, party out there, all right? It's the time to get yourself together, get your spirit right, get your mind right, preparing for the times to come, you know? But, yeah, because what happened when Yahweh shot fed the multitude, you know? This is John 6. In 24, this is when Yahweh shot fed the multitude with the, the loaves of bread, all right, and the fishes, and the fish. This is John 6 and 24, where it says, When the people therefore saw that Yahweh was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Yahweh. So they were looking for him, right? This is after, this is after he, that he performed that miracle, and he fed, I believe it was the 5,000, right? It says, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, whence camest thou hither? Yahweh answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. So he already knew they, what type of bullshit they was on. Right? He seen through all that bullshit because Yahweh Shai could read your mind. Right? He said, Y'all, you, you're not seeking me because of the miracle. You're seeking me just because you ate. Right? That's it. Because you will feel. Right? It tasted good to you. That's why you're looking for me. You know? <laughs> it's crazy. It's Jake, man. So they said unto him, Rabbi, whence comest thou hither? I right, mean, the master. This nigga's full of shit. <laughs> it says, Labor not for the meat. Verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perish it, but for the but for that meat which endured unto everlasting life, right, which is this word, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. 
for him had to had the most out of the father's seal, right? So he said, labor not for the meat that perish it, right? Because they wanted to eat. He said, but for the meat which endure into everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, right? So this was, these are two different, you know, separate types of meat, right? So, because he gave, he, he, he gave them meat already, right? He fed them already, right? But he said, labor not for the meat that perish it, but he says, but for the meat which the Son of Man shall give you. So what <laughs> what is that talking about? This is John 4. And 31 it says in the meantime in the meanwhile his disciples prayed him saying master eat but he said unto them i have meat to eat that ye know not of therefore said the disciples one to another had any man brought him out to eat yahweh shai said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work so that's that that is the meat this truth all right Doing the work of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shah. That's the meat, right? He was like, I got meat that you know not of. I was like, shit, who brought him something to eat? What are you talking about, right? But he was talking about this work, right? You know? So, yeah. Last script. Matthew 13. Because, like I said, our people are carnal. Yahweh, Shah went through this same thing as well, right? Because he didn't come up and learn in any school... Or, you know, come up the way you're supposed to come up, right? As of learning the scriptures. he It was already in him, right? Because he is the scriptures. He is the word, right? And if you didn't have any type of status back then, you know, you basically looked at it like you was nothing, right? You couldn't really tell the people who were on a, a, a high level back then anything, Right? Because a good a good a good example would be the the blind man, right, that was healed. Right, let me get that. This is uh what is that? What is that John nine? Right. And when you go down he was talking to the Pharisees because they thought that, you know, he was basically, you know, lying and shit. Cause they were it was like, Man, look, bro, <laughs> what happened? Cause Yahweh shot healed healed this man of his sight. All right, healed this man from being blind, I mean, and gave him sight. And when he was telling people this, they didn't want to believe that, you know, this man was healed. They called his parents and everything like, man, look, you said that, y'all said that he was blind from the break, but look, he's seeing now, so what's up? All right? But going back to the point, you couldn't really tell people nothing back then that were on a higher level than you, right? Because they'll buck up. They'll, they'll have, uh, their pride to get in the way because of their position. Right, this is John 9 and 31. It says, Now we know that the Most High hear not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of the Most High and doeth his will, him he hear it. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of the Most High, he could do nothing. They answered, basically, yeah, he was talking about your whole shot, right? Because they were basically, you know, for lack of better words, <laughs> I don't want to say hating on you, Howard Shot. I mean, yeah, I mean you can say that, right? Because they 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 didn't respect him, right? Because Howard Shot was basically saying that he was the son of the Most High, right, and doing many great things, and they didn't like it, right? So that verse thirty four says they answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sins, and doest thou teach us? And they cast him out. So basically, like, bro, you ain't you, you ain't shit. You know, they basically looking at the, at themselves like, you know, that they're way they're way above him. Like you can't you can't tell us shit, bro. We got it. We good, right? That's why Yahweh Shai he he stated that. Uh, he only came for those that are sick, not those that are whole, right? Because these niggas thought they had it already, right? This is uh Matthew thirteen. And 54, it says, And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogues. He's talking about Yahweh Shai. Saying so much that they were astonished, astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Like, what he, like, how is he doing this? How did he get this wisdom? Right? Just reading John 7, it says, How knoweth this man letters, never, never, having never learned? 
right? Because you had to come up in the school back then, right? But, you know, he was doing all these great things, doing all these miracles, where he had all his, all his wisdom, right? And what happened? It says, it's not this the carpenter's son? It's not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Once then had this man all these things, and they were offended in him. So they were, they, bro, they were offended. They were like, man, what the fuck? Hey, we, like, bro, how the, how the hell, you know, he know all this? How is he doing all this? Like, we, like, we know you, bro. We know your mama. We know your daddy, your sisters, you know. We grew up, like, we watched you grow up. We grew up around you, you know, the same city and all that. You're talking about you the son of the most high, this and that. You're talking about some you the bread that came from heaven, you know. And like, hell no. They didn't want to accept it because they were carnal. They was looking at, they was, they was being carnal, bro, basically, right? You know, they wasn't focusing on the things they were doing and then, and on their message, right? They were basically looking at him for who he was in that world, right? What type of status he had, right? He said, you the carpenter's son, you know? So, yeah, that, 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 that was really the lesson, man. Like, it's really, you know, just to not get caught up, right, on what you see. Right, because a prophet does not have to come um dress beautifully. Right. A prophet does not have to come or right, <laughs> having, you know, a Gucci garment, right? Or the Louis Vuitton belt, you know. They don't have to come matching, right? Having matching garments. And none of that, right? All that matters is the message, the word being preached, right? All that matters is the truth, right? Yahweh Shai told the disciples, I will make you fishers of men, right? This word is the bait. This word is enough to gather the elect. If you get caught up over the outward appearance of things, you get caught up over the food, you know, and all of that bullshit. Or you might not be of the elect, right? It's simple. Because the elect is going to hear the voice of Yahweh Shai and they're going to follow him. That's going to be it, right? So with that, I'm going to give all praise on the glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Kabadash. Of honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, peace and salutation to the Akim, to the elect, that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, pushing the truth and faith in its sincerity. Shalom.